I was brought up in Chigwell, Essex, so that's my tube stop. And I suppose part of growing up was doing that kind of shunt between the city and the sort of countryside. In fact, the, the rail line ran about 100 yards behind my mum and dad's place, so part of my childhood was going down to the footbridge and um, waving at the drivers, hoping that, to get a toot or a wave back, you know. The sound of the underground going overground behind my house was, was a rather soothing kind of thing. So, so it's been in my psyche, I suppose, for all those years, yeah. I suppose, in a way, the Harry Beck map does become mapped onto one's mind, really. And, and I mean, I never carry a tube map because I feel like I know it, you know. It is a sort of internalised network, and it's part of one's identity as a, as a Londoner, I think. So I've got a thing about transport and being transported in a, in a more imaginative or even spiritual sense, you know. And, and so the idea of making something for the underground to celebrate 150 years, I found rather exciting and kind of, yeah, and close to my heart, really. There's a kind of mindset that, <laughs> that one has to get into to, to deal with the fact that one's being shut off the underground with millions of other people. It's, it's very strange, you know, particularly rush hour where everything seems so kind of chaotic and, and extreme. But in fact, really, what's going on is pretty much everyday people just go from their home to their place of work and back again. So what looks like an incredibly entangled kind of mess, uh, individually, people are just following their same route. Um, to and fro, and, and so that kind of led me to think about mazes and then labyrinths, and the labyrinths may look at first sight like a maze, but actually there's only one route in and one route out, so it, I thought that was a nice symbol of both the individual sense that one makes of those kind of journeys and one's encounters with the tube, and also stands for a kind of mental space or something a bit more contemplative. Every station will have its own different labyrinth. So, so the labyrinth, as the idea, is, is the thing in common. Had, had the idea be quite nice if they were numbered according to the optimum journey of, of the record holder for going through every station on the tube network in, in the fastest time. I mean, he starts in Chesham and finishes at Terminal 5, and, uh, and they're numbered according to his route. The labyrinths are manufactured by the, the same people that make the signage for the underground, so it's completely in keeping with that. So it's vitreous enamel, very like punchy black and white graphics. The labyrinths are all circular, so that kind of echoes the round or to an extent, and the red cross at the bottom represents us, I guess, or it says you are here, and, um, and that gives you the the cue to enter into the puzzle, if you like. It's kind of spectacular and kind of humbling at the same time that each individual sign's hand printed with such care and craftsmanship, yeah. The quality of workmanship and, and that care and that handmade quality, I think, is, you know, one amongst many reasons why people cherish the tube. I think there is something of the mythic about, about these labyrinths that kind of chime with something as modern or as contemporary as the network of, of the tube. There's no getting away from the fact that there are 
millions of people in this city. And one is a very small kind of tiny element in that. And I suppose having them on the tube it is rather suggestive that, that there's a beginning of a journey and then a, a kind of eventual return. And that is a sort of daily ritual for, for most people. I guess the, the labyrinth returns one to oneself 